Thank you very much. Half Decent on Destiny 105.1 FM, your station in Oxford. This week, we've got a very special guest in the studio, so there's all the reason to text in. We've got Andy from Death of Hi-Fi. Say hey, hi. How you doing? You all right? Very good, thank you, Andy. How are you doing today? Uh, it's early. Is, early on Sunday is, is this early for you? Yeah. Sunday, isn't it? What time do you usually wake up on a Sunday? Mm, evening. Evening. <laughs> Well, hopefully you'll be at your best today because we're going to get you to do a little guest mix later okay. on. Okay. What do you have uh, planned for that? Um, uh, just I'm uh, going to play some uh, ghetto funk stuff I'm playing out at the moment. Um, seems to be going down all right. Uh, it's great stuff, so yeah. Should be good energetic stuff to keep everyone upbeat on a Sunday. <laughs> the reason why I've got Andy from Death of Hi-Fi in today is because when I, when I got this radio show and I wanted to think about the guests I always have, Andy's someone who's been around the Oxford music scene for a very long time and we've collaborated together a few times and always have like quite interesting conversations in terms of music and and other things as well what, what he means is we bang on about npcs basically is that, is that yeah ba- that is it we're we're npc nuts so to speak <laughs> you're still working on the brand new album yeah yeah is that right how's that going at the moment it's going all right it, the, I, I have the thing where I, I i start writing and then um i don't like it and i throw it away and start again so it's kind of a, about the fourth fifth kind of uh iteration of the album at the moment so Okay, and when are you expecting to get a release date? Do you know yet? <laughs> um, hopefully before the end of 2015. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. I know that I'm supposed to have a feature on that album, and I'll probably be one of the reasons it's well, held back. I, I didn't want to say anything, but <laughs> how long have you had that beat? <laughs> good, good year, maybe, yeah, at least. Yeah. But, yeah, you know, at least time. I'll get around Take to doing time. something. It'll be half decent when it's done anyway. Hey, <laughs> All right, well, I'm going to go into a track now from the new album. Do you have a name for the album yet? Follow. Follow? Yeah. Very good. Like, like Twitter? Like Twitter, yeah. Are you going to set up a, a Twitter account just for the album? Yeah, hashtag so you can follow. Say, hashtag follow, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, this next track is uh, one of my favourites of the new bunch that he's played me. It's uh, called Swim Away. And anyone that may have heard Death of Hi-Fi's previous stuff would, would notice a little difference in this one that we'll, we'll talk about afterwards. So this is Death of Hi-Fi with Swim Away. So if I Excellent stuff there, Death of Hi-Fi with Swim Away. And anyone that has heard the previous albums from Death of Hi-Fi will notice that there's an addition of a female vocalist now. That's right, Uh, uh, Miss Lucy, to give her a proper name, or Lucy Cropper if you're listening. Just quickly go through the members of Death of Hi-Fi quickly. So so there's me, um, kind of producer, DJ, kind of, I don't know, organiser maybe? There's Dan, who's kind of, right, or, or not so organised. Well, that's why we don't get stuff organised. Right, yeah, organized. yeah. Um, so Dan uh, is like guitarist, kind of producer as well, um, works, does all the visual stuff, um, and Lucy kind of writes a lot of the top line stuff, uh, and obviously sings, and makes us look better on stage. Your image on stage is, is something quite incredible. Uh, if anyone would have seen the um, poster that I put about for the show this week, you actually used to wear masks and, yeah. and you used to have loads of big visuals in the background of crazy stuff that, that really helped the live experience of your music yeah. come across, especially the more instrumental tracks. So with the addition of Lucy, do you think that is still going to be in the show or are you going to maybe take it back and... and organize it as more free of you i'd still like it to be there but i think because the the reason we did it originally was because we didn't want people just to be staring at us like behind laptops right yeah um you know whatever so we wanted to kind of make people make it interesting for people to watch but when we had lucy in um it gives 
them something much better to look at than us. Right, so okay. <laughs> we don't have to kind of be, the, we're kind of just in the background, man. That's right, the, that's okay. The way we want it. So now Lucy will take the, the forefront, be at the front, and you guys can just stay at the back, do your thing on the yeah. laptops, you, and then... You know me, if I could do anything, I wouldn't even be on stage. I'd yeah. be like, getting someone else to do it. <laughs> yeah, I know that you're a big fan of uh, MF Doom, and yeah. you always say to me that you like how he can get imposters to go on stage, and if you could, you <laughs> would do could, it yourself. If I could get away with it, I would. <laughs> yeah. I well, it. maybe one day. Uh, if there's any imposters out there that want to um, get on stage as deaf of hi-fi, then give us a text 07970-773-105. Uh, we're going to keep the new tracks moving, and this next one actually has a, a video for it. This one's called Lazarus. That's right, yeah. We shot the video uh, back end of August. Um, we released it Christmas Eve. Um, it's kind of crazy. It's got like 10,000 views already. Already? And at least 9,500 of them. Well, probably me, but um, <laughs> hitting F5 on repeat. You've but. got quite a few yeah, computers yeah, yeah, yeah. set up just to <laughs> log in and all those YouTube accounts so you get more yeah, likes yeah. as well. Well, this next track is absolutely great. It's got a bit of a 90s dance vibe to it as well, which is one of the reasons we've got Drems doing a, a 90s dance mix a bit later on. This is Death of Hi-Fi with Lazarus. <laughs> That was Death of Hi-Fi with Lazarus. A brilliant track there. And like I said, a bit of a 90s dance vibe to it. What inspired you to go into the breakbeat side of things? I'm a big vinyl collector. So um, I kind of originally had all these breakbeats anyway, but and it was kind of the thing when you, when you first, I suppose, get into production, you rely on them quite a lot. Uh, and then I made a conscious choice to go away from them because I felt... So that you could learn how to make drum loops a bit yeah, better and yeah, that yeah, sort yeah. of thing. Yeah, you kind of using individual hits and stuff. But I think I kind of suddenly realised, I just thought I'm, I'm shutting myself off from all these like incredible breaks and stuff that I, I love. Why not use them? Yeah. Dude, that is actually about, that's not a straight break. That's about three different breaks in one. I've kind of chopped. So you're being a bit more creative with yeah, it as well, yeah, and not, not being as lazy as some people out there. Yeah. And that's surprising for me. Yeah, I know, yeah, yeah. We were just talking about how lazy you can be, and then you're actually putting some work into I know, your music. I know. Don't tell anyone. <laughs> no, well, that's um, you. You do quite a lot. You you produce. You, you even beatbox and rap. If if anyone sees you on stage yeah, as well. Yeah, I've always said I wanted like a big drum on my back and like a cymbal. Do you, you want to turn it into back? this? <laughs> a one-man hi-fi you yeah, could go yeah, for. That'd be all right. With all of your producing, your DJing, and every, everything that you've done, you seem to keep it in a good contrast that you're busy on all aspects. You're always producing, you're always DJing, yeah. and you're always releasing your own music. But what really came first out of all of that? Uh, honestly, I think it was probably MCing. I, I was, um, and you must know this, Chris, that you kind of... when. You, I'm just assuming that you started emceeing first. I had the thing where I, I, I was doing it, um, and there was a, like, uh, I don't know if anyone remembers those, like Simon Harris breaks, beats and scratches. Yeah, yeah. So I had those, and they were kind of all right, but they didn't, <laughs> yeah. they didn't go anywhere, you know, for the time. So I was like, ah, oh, I, I need some beats. So I'd like, I didn't know any producers. So you started all. making your own. So I started making my own just to kind of to rhyme over, and then... It was slightly different for me. I started... Um, producing because I liked music in movies so oh, I wanted okay. to make soundtracks and yeah, then yeah. I realized I couldn't sing so that, <laughs> so I started rapping <laughs> so it was slightly different for me so that, does that mean that you did sing at one point then? I well yeah but you, I would not call it singing because you know for well now that at some point you're, you're gonna, gonna try to give me a blast that you're, you're, you're gonna try it yeah well I'll tell you what the, the new beat you've sent me I'll sing on that one for you if you want uh, so, so it can go on your album as a bit of an exclusive. I'll go back to you on that. Yeah. You only get a rap game, only for the money, get a fame, paparazzi. 
A little bit of uh, classic hip-hop for you there with Exhibit and Paparazzi. And when you think old-school hip-hop, you tend to go back to, like, Grandmaster Flash and things like that. But for a lot of us, when we start getting into a hip-hop, especially if you're b between the ages of 25 and 30, you'll remember the 90s and you'll remember the early 2000s and the exhibits and, the, you know, when Dre was still releasing music. and What, <laughs> what and he was like a billionaire? When, when he wasn't a billionaire and had to make that's music, still. some time to make that next album as well. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't think we'll ever see Detox come out, but you know, I, I'm quite glad actually because some of the music that he did release, like I Need a Doctor and Kush as well, it yeah. it maybe he it was better off he didn't release the album. And I get the feeling that's why he hasn't released it because it's been because he knows it wasn't his best material and he knows he can do better. Let's hope that's the reason. And, and he's not going to be. To be honest. It, it's not going to top the last two albums he made at all, is it? Well, it's good to know that you've got faith in Dr. Dre. I'm sure he doesn't care. Dre, if you're listening, text in to Andy. It's 07970 If you text us in, we'll play well, any of your music. If you do, I'm going to tell you how bad your headphones are. <laughs> <laughs> Whilst those tracks were playing, Andy was telling me that he's actually got some got some exciting things coming up, haven't you, Andy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just a quick little plug, really. Uh, end of February, so February the 28th, I think it's the Saturday. That, uh, that is the Saturday, not yeah. A, not a leap year this year, is it? Oh, I forget. Anyway, it's, it's <laughs> the Saturday, the last Saturday in February, uh, down at Coy in Whitney. Uh, I'm doing a DJ battle with um, my good friend Funk Soul Stu. So you're battling your friend? Yeah. It was his idea. It was his idea. Do you think idea. he's trying to show you up a bit? Oh, without doubt. He's got special guests lined up already. Oh, it? really? Yeah, I've got a few little things planned. Because uh, it's, a, it's a theme. It's so, so what theme are you going with, then? Superheroes. Oh, okay. So he's going to have Spider-Man come out and... Well, if I tell you, he's the Joker. Okay. And I'm Batman, a.k.a. the Deck Knight. <laughs> That's actually a really good combination there. Yeah. All right. Okay. So Batman vs Joker at yeah. Coy in Whitney. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's it's the launch of uh, Whitney Music Festival, I think. So. Oh, brilliant! Going to kick it all off. Whitney and you played Whitney Music Festival last year. Did you? Yeah. yeah you did as well, didn't you? I did as well. Yeah. yeah. It was a lot of fun, and uh, it's always a good opportunity. Whenever um, we play the same festival, we always end up doing until I stop breathing. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and, un uh, unrehearsed. And, and I always count in. See, so you're going to hit it on time the first part. No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, we'll find out. It's, we'll always find out. I never rehearse the track, so every time we do it live, it's a lot of fun. You can check that out on YouTube as well. Death of High Five featuring Half Decent until I stop breathing. That was on your last album, it wasn't was. it? It was. Didn't that get like... It was in the si one of the singles of the year for 2012, uh, It was. It was. I think it was number 11 Somewhere in like Night that. Shift magazine, yeah. Best Songs in Oxford for 2011 yeah. or 12. So, yeah, yeah there you go. there's a reason to listen to it. I did actually play it on the show last week for the people that tuned in last week to say oh, okay. that I was going to have you in studio. Do I get PRS for that? Or? <laughs> yeah, you do. You do, actually. Really? Yeah, you okay. do. <laughs> And uh, as I was doing a little bit of research on Death of Hi-Fi, it was I found some stuff out that I didn't actually know about him, and he put his band interest as low-budget sci-fi, computer game soundtracks, and machines that go bleep. <laughs> was that was that like I didn't dig too far? I wasn't looking at your Bebo or anything. That was actually that was actually on your Facebook. Bebo, yeah. Wow, that's so cool. so I haven't gone too far back. But what what, what influences you? In, just in terms of things that go bleep, how many bleep sounds do you have in your music? Oh, I have a bit of an addiction to, um, like, toy, like, going to toy shops. And, you know, there's, they've always got those little machine, like, the little toys that make sounds. And they've got the little bit cut out of the plastic where you can try it. Right, yeah. I always go in there and try and set them all off. To, to make a, to make a track. track. Like in the shop, and then we walk out. We're going to have to go in with the GoPros and try <laughs> yeah, and get a YouTube yeah. video out of that someday. That's, if we could pop to Toys R Us now, actually, after the show, we'll we could, yeah, we could yeah, do yeah. that, have a little have a little bit of fun. Well, I could Toys R Us, if you're listening, you know, yeah, that's, that's a joke. We're on, yeah, we won't be there, don't <laughs> worry. <laughs> we're going to play some more um, brand new Death of Hi Fight in just a moment, and one of the questions I wanted to bring to you was what can people expect when they hear your new music? And I think you answered it by telling me that this track that we're about to play is the first song you've ever done with chord progression. Yeah, and it's got a key change in it. A key which change. Is, which is, if anyone knows me, uh, that's like alien. So 
It's something you don't deal with no, at all. No. no. So a lot of the music before now may have just been either, like you said earlier, hits and breaks or, or yeah. kind of more sample based, I yeah, guess, yeah. then. So you would never need to, to do it. No. And I think what, what I did with the last album, because there wasn't actually that many samples on it, but I took a lot of kind of samples and then replayed them and then worked out and then changed them. So kind of I took inspiration from samples. So that you didn't need to have to pay yeah, sample yeah, yeah. rights. Yeah. It's always a good idea to yeah, do that. Yeah. yeah. But this album, there's, there, touch wood, there'll be no kind of samples at all, I don't think, apart from breaks, apart from the actual breaks themselves. Okay. Good, good. Well, this next track is called Serenity, and you also mentioned that this was the first track you did with Lucy. Yes, yeah, so she kind of came in, hadn't, really, hadn't ever worked together before, and she kind of laid down the tracks. We did it at Soundworks. Um, that was it, really. And the, and the writing process for you is, when you're producing the track, do you... Do you take control of the other members of the group and try and tell them what to do so that you can get your vision across? Or are you happy to receive stuff from them? I don't know if Lucy and Dan are listening, but... Um, <laughs> that would change your answer, would it? I, I'm, I'm, I'm not a control freak, but I am when it comes to like the studio, so yeah. So in studio so, you have to have final say? Yeah. Is, so so everything is your doing yeah. yeah. Oh, I throw a strop and... I'm sort of like that because I remember when you sent me the instrumental for Until I Stop Breathing I, oh, yeah. I said to you I wanted the separate so I could mix it myself yeah. before yeah, yeah, yeah. rapping on it and it's so hard like when you have that I can't just do it as a guest vocalist I have to I start thinking about everything else and, and where things are going to go and taking Listen, control it, of it it becomes a collaboration then because I think a lot of people talk about collabs and stuff and that's not real is they just go oh someone's giving me a beat and I've written to it so you prefer that I take your yeah. tracks and, and that's a remove the hi-hats and <laughs> yeah, get rid of all the yeah. other sounds as well just think oh I'll redo the drum Sorry. loop he'll never notice I'll, I'll add them back in when you give me the, the vocals there's a, a big thing that I heard about uh, the Beatles was that Paul McCartney used to redo Ringo's drums after he left the studio. Apparently so, yeah. And so a lot of the tracks, it's actually not Ringo yeah. playing the drums. I get the feeling that he probably redid a lot of stuff. So you think it's all just Paul McCartney? Pretty much, yeah. Wow. Paul, if you're listening. <laughs> <laughs> We've got all the high celebs listening to this show. This next track is Death of Hi-Fi with Serenity. This is a great one. Yeah. 